text from the epistle reading, Philippians chapter 4. In Jesus' name, amen. Whatever. That's a slang term, meaning well, whatever you say, or I don't care what you say. The term is used to dismiss whatever the previous statement was, express indifference. It's usually at least mildly offensive, at the very least kind of impolite. In the late 20th century and early 21st century, uh, that would be like the last 30 years, I guess, the word has become a sentence in its own right. Uh, grammatically, it's an interjection. <laughs> uh, it's used as a passive-aggressive conversational tool to block, to leave the responder without a convincing retort. Anything they say or do can simply be blocked by the retort, whatever, whatever. In modern slang, hearing whatever is not very nice. But in the way St. Paul uses whatever in our reading today, it includes everything that is good in God's way of thinking. And I think we can apply whatever in today's epistle reading to cover all the other main points of the paragraph that St. Paul wrote. Think of it as in all circumstances, in all situations, no matter what is happening, whatever, remember Christ is with you and loves you. We start with rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Always, whatever, no matter what is happening, whatever you're going through, rejoice. It's not easy, is it? Rejoice. Why rejoice? Whatever. Because Christ is with you, leading you as the Good Shepherd. He's prepared His heavenly banquet for you and is with you now to help you through any difficulties you face in life. That leads to whatever you're going through. In everything, pray. Whatever is happening, whether good times or bad, don't be anxious as if everything depends on you. I need to hear these words myself. Instead, pray, relying on God, your Heavenly Father, for all your needs. And pray with thanksgiving means you're trusting that God will always do what He knows is best for you. It may not be the thing we think we need, but He knows what is best for us. Whatever is happening, pray. Always rejoicing and always praying, that leads to peace. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This peace is the peace of a restored, loving relationship between God and you. This peace is the peace of, that doesn't exist because of what you do. In fact, it's just the opposite of whatever you and I are able to create. Our own efforts, even our very best efforts, can be spoiled and are spoiled by our own sinfulness. But in Christ Jesus suffering, dying on the cross and rising again, God has made renewed peace between him and us. Because it's peace that is about sin forgiven. So whatever your sins of omission, those are the good things you should have done that you didn't. Whatever your sins of commission, the wrong things you have done. <clears throat> whatever your sins, in Christ Jesus, there is peace, all your sins forgiven. Then we come to where Paul actually uses the word whatever. In verses 8 to 9, Paul strings together a whole list of whatevers and tells us to think about these things. And the Greek verb literally means keep on thinking about these things. The list is whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. And the way it's written, there are three pairs of those qualities. So we'll start with whatever is true and honorable. That means what's true in God's eyes, and therefore it ought to be honored by us as well. Whatever is just and pure means those things, those 
thoughts that we have, the words we speak, the actions we do, they are the ones that are judged as just and righteous by God. Therefore, they are pure thoughts, words, and actions in God's eyes. Whatever is lovely and commendable are the things that should draw the love of our hearts and be commended, be praised by others. So this trio of pairs of virtue is followed by any excellence, anything worthy of praise. That's talking about faith and living that faith. Keep thinking about these things, Paul says. Actually, it's more than just thinking, but understanding these things as the real virtues and values of life. If these are the things that really do have value in our life, they'll be the things we want to live by. That becomes clear in Paul's next word. What you've learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. Paul is the one who taught the good news of Jesus to them. Paul is the one who lived a life of love and forgiveness, both in his needing forgiveness and in his giving forgiveness in front of their eyes. Just as they and we are to keep on thinking on all that is good in God's eyes, so they and we are to keep on practicing, that is, living out the faith in daily life. And with this, Paul takes something he said just a moment ago, the peace of God, and reverses the phrase, the God of peace, this time he says, the God of peace will be with you. Peace is with you because God himself is with you. That relationship restored because of the forgiveness Jesus gives us. What a wonderful promise that God of peace will be with us. A few weeks ago when we started this series in Philippians, we were reminded that Paul was writing from prison in Rome. That comes into the picture again here today in verses 10 to 13. We can put it in terms of whatever happens, show Christian concern for others. Paul is thankful that they, the Philippian church, have showed their Christian concern by sending support for him, probably to help some way with his financial needs or his daily living needs. Maybe they sent a food package, I don't know. Probably not, because it was pretty far, so they'd probably send funds to help him. They had not been able to do it earlier. We learn elsewhere in the New Testament that hard times affected these people in Macedonia, where Philippi is located. We also know that even when they had hard times, they had gathered offerings from what little they had to send to their Christian brothers and sisters in Jerusalem who were affected by famine and even persecution, cut off from their families when they became believers in Jesus. Now they've also been able to show their help for Paul, this congregation in Philippi. Paul is less focused on their gift than on their motivation. Their Christian concern always existed, but now they've been able to follow through on it. Whatever our life circumstances. There are always opportunities to show Christian concern for those in greater need than ourselves. And Christ's love for us will motivate us to help those in need. Paul uses the word again. I've learned in whatever situation I am to be content. Christian contentment is about knowing that God's love in Christ can never leave us that he will always help us in any and every situation. And like Paul, we can be content when, whether we have plenty or whether we have plenty of need. All of this, all of these whatevers are possible because of the last line, Christ strengthens us. In Jesus' parable of the wedding feast, that was the gospel reading today, all the guests are there because of the invitation of the king. And we find out that they're not even the people originally invited because those decided they didn't want to be there. Even their wedding clothes, if you know the history of uh, uh, Middle Eastern weddings, even their wedding clothes would have been a gift of the king. 
That's why we've got that strange little thing of there's a guy in the middle of the banquet who doesn't have wedding clothes. And you think, well, the king kicks him out. That doesn't seem fair. He's there without the clothes that the king gave him as if to say, I can be here any way I want to be and I don't have to be here the way you want me to be here. It's, it's an insult to the king to not, to say, I'm gonna eat your food, but I'm not gonna get dressed up in the gift you give me. In the gift you give me, that's the problem. He has rejected part of the gift and thinks he can have the other part of the gift on his terms rather than the king's terms. In our lives, all that we have comes from our King, our Lord and Savior. He gives us the reason and the ability to rejoice. He gives us confidence to pray to Him. He gives us forgiveness that brings peace. He teaches us what is true and honorable, just and pure, lovely, commendable, excellent and praiseworthy. He teaches us all these things in His Holy Word. His Holy Spirit gives us the gift of faith and helps us live in it. He enables us to love others in Christian concern. He helps us to be content in whatever circumstance, and He strengthens us day by day with His love and forgiveness. Whatever happens to you in this life, Jesus makes all the difference. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in this Christ Jesus. Amen.